Hey, everybody, this is Mark Sims again, just asking a few questions, just a few questions. I have Valerie Leonard on the line from the west side of Chicago. Valerie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Valerie, I've seen you stuff on Facebook. I've heard you on radio shows and whatnot. But what do you actually do? <laughs> what does Valerie Leonard do on the west side? <laughs> Maybe a better question is, what don't I do? I I, I find myself having to um, answer that question a lot. But what do I do? I work with nonprofit organizations, helping them to make a better impact to their clients and communities. And that can be through a number of methods. It can be through consulting. I've got an online community called Nonprofit Utopia. I've got a podcast. And every now and then, I feel tempted to go back to my old activist days and helping them put together advocacy campaigns. So, so that's kind of what I do in a nutshell. You told me earlier before we went on the air that uh, you were born at the Mount Sinai Hospital. Yes, indeed. Just and like just I like think. me, and I'm a South Sider, <laughs> but I was born on on West Side at the Mount Sinai Hospital. So let me ask you a question about the West Side. Because you know the West Side way better than I do. How's the West Side doing these days? I mean, the African American West Side. How's it doing in Chicago? How's it doing these days? Yeah, I would say it's a tale of two cities. Um, people don't like to talk about it. Some of us are doing well, and some of us are doing not so well. I'm very concerned with what I see going on in North Lawndale. Um, as you know, North Lawndale has a poverty rate about. 40% or so. So when you have gentrification and you got a system where only about 23% are owning their homes, you know, that to me is a perfect storm for displacement if we're not careful. I, I say that. No, I say that because when I travel through the West Side, I'm not against the Mexicans. Latino, they say Latinos. What's the other term they use? Latinx. Latinx. That's the term they use now. I hear these liberals say these terms. I'm not against anybody. Because, you know, on the West Side, the uh, that show Shameless on uh, Showtime, they have the Shameless mm-hmm. house near the police station on Ogden, right? Ogden near home and somewhere. I forgot right, the actual right. street. And uh, I've seen the home because I've only seen the show once. So, But that's still the West Side. But when I see that, there's some black folks, there's some Mexican people. So I, I see, it looks like to me, I'm not a demographer, Valerie Leonard, the, uh, the Mexicans are coming uh, north, north, mm-hmm. and then you have some gentrification coming from the south. Uh, and then people, I hear rumors that people wanted to gentrify or take over, whatever term you want to use. Austin on the west side of Chicago, Austin neighbor on the west side. So... As I see it, I don't think black most of the black folks who are on the west side now is not going to be there twenty years from now. That's correct. I if could be wrong. You tell me if I'm ready. crazy now. <laughs> if, right, right, right. If we if we don't do what we need to do, you know, again, when you have a situation when almost half the community is living in poverty, and less than one fourth, you know, close to twenty five percent, but just under twenty five percent actually own their homes, unless there's somebody working with people to get them to a point where they can make a living wage and actually buy a home and take a stake in the land, or if there's some other entity that is willing to, you know, make sure that there is affordable housing and affordable housing for the people who currently live there, not necessarily affordable as we describe it. We're we're going to be in for, you know, a, a rude awakening. You know, we're going to wake up one day, and that will not be a majority African American community. And I, and I say that because things do change. Nothing will last forever. Some people bemoan the fact of uh, the declining African American population here in the city of Chicago, but I, I can't stop it. So my thing is that what type of Negroes are we are we going to be five, ten, fifteen, twenty five, thirty years from now, whether we are here or not, and whether we move out of the city out of the county, out of the whole state. Because of, it's, what's the old uh, song from Harold Melvin and, and the Blue Notes? Uh, you can't have from yourself. Everywhere you go, there you are. <laughs> right, right, right. So my thing is Sound that like what type of nigga? My dad used to say. Oh, he said it? Okay. I, you know, it was, it was, <laughs> he, was, he was right. So what type of, what type of people, uh, what type of people are we going to be, whether we are here or not? Are the leaders on the West Side talking about the future of African Americans, descended of the slaves on the West Side of Chicago? I think when we talk about it, we're not as direct as you are. You know, we're, I think, a little bit more politically correct. Um, We 
tend to focus on things like low-income people, poor people, um, so as not to offend. So it, so when you don't address the problem directly, that can also be part of the problem. And this is just my opinion. You know, this is, you know, the way I hear people talking about the problem. And a lot of the challenges African American has have is across the country. It's really income inequality and capitalism one on one, if you will, if you will. Mm-hmm. And we just had a teacher strike in Chicago. And one thing that frustrates me about the teacher strike, I know they're striking for this and that, but the teachers union never talk. They, I don't hear them talking about teaching and learning. Are they training the young people on the west side for the jobs of the future, the skills of the future? Some of those skills, they, they'll still be what we need now is what we're going to need 20 years from now, plumbers and, and carpenters. How's the education for low-income black residents on the west side? Is it getting better or is it just the same old, same old? I think it's the same old, same old, but I would not necessarily blame the teachers' union for that. And um, I, I think we need to be more... And when I say we, I'm talking about residents. We need to demand uh, what we need from our schools. You know, when you look at the Latino population, when they came here, and and typically, you know, they have not been a bunch of rich people coming over, but that has not stopped them, in spite of the fact that there's a language barrier, that hasn't stopped them from demanding what they need from their schools, and they tend to get it, whether, you know, there are people who are undocumented or not. Um, they they get what they want. I think we need to be more organized as, as residents, as parents, and, and demand what we need from our schools. I think if we put more of a demand for education that will actually lead to these jobs, then we will have it in more than one or two schools. You know, we might have it in a few schools, and when I say it, I'm talking about vocational ed, you know, something like, you know, manufacturing or whatever that will lead to a living wage job. But, you know, by and large, we're not demanding that stuff, and we might not be exposed to it. We might not even know what to ask for. And then sometimes we're too scared to ask for it because we don't want to upset the apple cart. And then we just are content to wait for it while Rome is burning and our schools, you know, schools are suffering, our kids are suffering. I can't agree with you uh, enough. Uh, I have to end this podcast, but I have to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna invite you back, but uh, to okay. continue this conversation. But p- uh, promote your. You said you have a radio show and everything. Promote that again. I, I do. Yeah, it's nonprofit utopia. It's a podcast on BlogTalkRadio.com. We come on live every Monday at two o'clock. We're actually taking today off because it's Veterans Day, but every Monday at two o'clock. From 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock Central Standard Time, we have guests who can talk about, you know, their journeys in nonprofit. So this is people like yourself who are very active in the community. We have folks who run nonprofits, folks who give money to nonprofits to talk about different programs. And, you know, so in effect, you know, learning lessons from various people in nonprofits so that we don't have to repeat the same lessons our, ourselves. Valerie Leonard, it's been a pleasure, and I will talk to you sometime probably to January, first of the year. Thank you okay, so much. Okay, awesome. Thank you so and much. And thank you.